All right, so this lecture is addressing the importance of species, uh, the abundance of species which are on the earth, and making a case for why we need to preserve biodiversity, why we need to preserve these species um, for humans. So as a case study, first we're going to talk about the bowhead whale, which I may have mentioned before. This is the animal I did my research on for my dissertation for my PhD. Well, the bowhead whale was hunted to near extinction by Yankee whalers for commercial purposes where they harvested their baleen and blubber. Um, and it's biologically the oldest living mammal in the world that we know of. We've had record of them being close to 200 years old. And it is currently a very important um, resource for the Inupia Eskimos of Alaska and also Greenland, Canada, and Russia. They depend on it for food, and it's a very significant part of their culture as well. The bowhead whale is dependent on ice, which serves as a refuge for the bowhead whale um, during the winter months and also um, even the summer months. prevents predators such as killer whales from going up into the um, Arctic waters and um, killing their calves, right? Um, one population has... Uh, recovered substantially. Estimates have them at being close to 10,000 or more individuals at this point. Um, and this is the Alaskan uh, population, which is still hunted by um, many different villages uh, within Alaska. And that's what these red points on this um, map are. So this is a migratory species that migrates um, up to the Beaufort Sea in the summertime, where it has a very rich area for um, phytoplankton and zooplankton blooms which it eats and then it migrates down to the Bering Sea for the summer months but this is uh, highlights a lot of the problems and concerns and environmental issues involved with um, a species so this is an endangered species it was endangered due to human um, activities, direct human activities in hunting and over ex exploitation of a resource, um, but it's very important to um, native um, and indigenous peoples, um, so it has a cultural and aesthetic um, significance. Um, so there, a lot of science has gone into um, understanding this species and um, understanding how to help this species recover from its near extinction. Um, and in doing so, we've learned a lot of things about the Arctic environment, including uh, how a mass reduction of sea ice uh, might be a big problem for a lot of these species living up there. All right, so wildlife involves uh, species um, which are um, oftentimes hunted, but are uh, found throughout our natural environments. So the question is why preserve these species? What is their importance? What is their significance? Well, one of the things that species provide us is ecosystem capital. It provides us um, the ability to draw from resources from our environment. So, um, and even if we don't directly draw a species uh, from the environment, it still is an indicator of ecosystem health. Um, also, um, species provide the biodiversity, which makes our ecosystems uh, stable. And then there are, of course, recreational and subsistence hunting, which is important. Well, what about plants? Plants, of course, are fundamental to our animals and our wildlife uh, because animals eat plants. There are a lot of different reasons to preserve wildlife species, but they all have the same goal of having a sustainable man management program of those national natural resources. All right, so one of the ways to look at ecosystems and the living things there is by its biological wealth. Now, we define natural living things as biota, or we refer to them as biota. There are about two million described species, but there might be up to 30 million species of different things on the earth. This depends on how you uh, define a species and also we, uh, there's a lot of the earth which we have not discovered um, and found all the species there. In fact, all of 
all of the earth, all the ecosystems of the earth. There are many, many different species there that haven't been described. Uh, the biota is responsible for the structure and maintenance of ecosystems, right? So you have the flow of water, um, the lithosphere, hydrosphere, um, and atmosphere interacting, but the the biota, the biosphere, the living things within it also um, help those re um, interactions and cycles complete themselves. Um, the biological wealth then can be looked at as the biota that make up the ecosystem capital which provide for human goods and services. Uh, the biodiversity then is the richness or the abundance of, of living things uh, within an area. So the relationship then between biota, biological wealth, and biodiversity is, uh, is that they're all connected, right? If you decrease the biota, you're decreasing the biological wealth and also decreasing the, the, the biodiversity. All right, so biological wealth. Um, the most obvious form of biological wealth is agricultural. agricultural. We use um, and have modified organisms from the environment around us and we have um, created areas in which we grow them for food, right? Um, this has caused extinctions because we need land in order to grow our food and so whatever was living there on that land has to be removed first. Extinctions cost 4.5 trillion dollars a year in the loss of, of goods and services, but we don't recognize this loss because we're still getting food, right? Um, and because we have alternate um, technology in place to pay for those, those losses. Now, the um, we also don't have a connection to our environment right so you go to the grocery store and you buy food but you had nothing to do with the growing of that food the planting the watering the complex processes going into making it available for you at the grocery store right so as long as there's food there at the grocery store and you can pay for it then there's really no connection between you and your ecosystem or environment Someone who would recognize this loss greater is someone who is directly dependent on the ecosystem, right? So in lower income countries, oftentimes they are going out and harvesting food in their environment, um, growing food in their environment, and changes to the environment which directly affect their ability to do that are going to be much uh, more significant in their life than to uh, people in higher income countries where this food is just there and the connection to their environment is is not there. All right, so how do species have value? Okay, how do we look at them in relation to our other things, say our, our home, our cars, um, the things that we surround ourselves every day? How would you compare a bird to those other things that you value in your house or in your life? Value is first recognized as something which is um, um, connected to their environment with people who wanted to preserve plumage of shorebirds. So uh, these shorebirds were being killed and their feathers were being plucked to make all these fancy hats which were being sold in many areas in, uh, I think this is like 1700s. Um, but uh, these populations of birds were being decimated um, and eventually people discovered or um, had the epiphany that they wanted to preserve these birds. They didn't want them to be lost and so there was a um, concerted effort to preserve them. So why don't we just hunt everything to extinction? Why don't we just use these birds until you know they're they're gone and then we'll worry move on to something else well there's two things two kinds of value that we put on things which are going to prevent that first is the instrumental value where it provides a direct benefit to another entity so if we want to continually have feathers for your hats you can't harvest all the birds to extinction 
Uh, same thing with resources such as wood, right? You can't harvest all the forests and you won't have any more wood for your house. Um, but this is centered on humans as the source, right? As it relates everything to human um, impact. So it's anthropocentric. The other one is intrinsic value. It's really for its own sake and does not have to directly benefit humans for it to be um, valuable to to humans or um, maybe has religious significance as well. Um, a, a great example of this is just animal rights, the rights of animals. Um, animals are um, you know, you, we harvest them, they have in, um, economic value to us, but also in being able to feel pain, they should also be respected and have some form of rights as well. All right, so there's four categories of value, our raw materials and food, our medicines and pharmaceuticals, our recreational, aesthetic, and scientific value, and then the intrinsic value. Now preserving our ecosystems adds or preserves these uh, values in our biodiversity in the in the organisms that remain um, and if, if we the more that we lose in our biodiversity biota um, the more of these things we're going to lose as well all right so biodiversity measure in, it's measured in a number of ways either in genetics, uh, varieties of communities and ecosystems, and calculations include richness and evenness. Okay, so t an example here. Here we have two ecosystems with the same number of species. However, this ecosystem has a lot more of this tree species than other species. So this would be um, just as rich but this ecosystem is more even because the species are more evenly distributed among different types of species. So that's um, two different ways. This would be they're equally equal in rich, richness, but this one is more even. Our biodiversity decline is a big problem worldwide. It's uh, resulting in the loss of endemic species. Endemic species are found only in one habitat and nowhere else. Um, Sorry, this is, uh, what are some endemic species to Virginia? Um, you would say there are a lot of salamander species we talked about before, which are only found in, in Virginia. Um, I'd have to do more research, maybe we could do that in class, talk about the endemic species to Virginia. Using North America as a model for other areas, you can uh, look at the biodiversity and what's happening and what the current trend is. So in North America at least 500 species have gone extinct, a third are vulnerable, threatened, or already extinct. And we are continually seeing population decline of many species. Okay, so that's what this graph is showing. So generally biodiversity is decreasing. decreasing. Why is that? Well, um, you can use this acronym HIPPO. Um, to highlight some of those reasons. So first is habitat destruction. Again, we have to clear areas so that we can grow our plants. Um, second is invasive species. And here's a worldwide map of threats from invasive species. And you can see where there is a lot of humans, a lot of human um, imports and exports, you have a lot more invasive species. <coughs> Third is pollution. So we increase uh, the amount of chemicals and substances in the air, in the waterways, and the land, and that can uh, decrease the ability for organisms to survive. Population, our increase in human population, of course, is putting stresses on the environment as we need goods and services from the environment to support those people. And fifth, over-exploitation. So when we harvest something too much, such as what was done with the Atlantic cod. Um, we, they knew that the cod itself was decreasing in numbers, but they continued to try and harvest it more and more, and eventually it crashed to the point where now it doesn't seem like it will ever recover. 
All right, some progress has been made, however, to biodiversity. Some species thought to be extinct have been found, including this pygmy tarsier. Um, some species have been brought back from the brink of extinction, which we talked about the bowhead whale. New policies are being made to protect biodiversity, and some scientific breakthroughs are making it easier to breed captive populations of endangered species, including mentioned coyotes and wolves last time. There's um, a breeding program for wolves and bringing them back into North America. All right, so then conservation biology is the branch of science most focused on preserving and protecting species. And in order to do that, you have to name and classify organisms. So taxonomy and conservation biology are tied together in that respect. Um, we kind of have to know what's out there, describe it, learn its ecology and how it interacts with its environment before we can figure out how to preserve and make sure uh, species are, are thriving and healthy. Some things to help us do that, some policies include the Lacey Act, which forbids interstate commerce in illegally killed wildlife. So if you have an endangered species to an area, um, which would make it illegal in that country or in that state, you can't, you know, kill it and then just bring it to a different state and and uh, sell it there. That would be a violation of the um, Lacey Act. And it allows federal charges to be um, given to um, people that do that. Still be being used today to catch and convict a number of poachers in the U.S. The Endangered Species Act was a landmark act to help preserve species. Threatened or endangered endangered species are protected by being illegal to kill and illegal to directly affect their habitat. And here's a list of some endangered species here. Being um, able to be listed on the um, Endangered Species Act requires a certain amount of research. Um, first, to, to demonstrate that their populations have decreased um, must also include where the species is found and where it may be restored so an assessment of their critical habitat and finally it has to have a recovery plan so there has to be something in place for how are we going to help this um, animal return back to its at least somewhat um, of its uh, natural population numbers a lot of things have benefited from the environmental um, species act including some birds of prey so DDT was an insecticide used to kill um, mosquitoes for um, lots of years in the 40s and 50s. Um, it persisted in the environment and increased in concentration in higher birds of prey such as eagles and falcons and owls. Um, the en Environmental Species or Endangered Species Act um, called for the reduction of DDT and since a lot of these birds of prey have uh, started recovering their populations. Whooping cranes, um, very intensive plan has uh, has been put in place to preserve this endangered species including teaching them how to migrate and flying with them back to their natal grounds. To this day they've had very little success with um, getting them to repopulate in the wild um, but there is this program still in place for helping these cranes migrate back and forth to their breeding and wintering grounds. Um, the spotted owl is another um, high profile case in which a very very large amount of land which would be very accessible to harvest for timber was uh, put off limits you know, no longer allowed to do that because uh, the spotted owl needed uh, a site for recovery. Okay, that's it for uh, biodiversity.